Hey y'all, welcome back. It's another podcast episode of the Runners Club Podcast. <laughs> I'm your co-host, Courtney Phillips. Yo, it's Ian Gonzalez. How y'all feeling? And today we have a special guest. And his name is Simeon. Hey. Hey. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Can you tell us your full name? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Simeon Jacob. Um, I guess if we wanted to go full name, it's Simeon Jeremy Jacob. There's like, you know, stories behind the name. Um, Sounds very biblical. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. What What do y'all want to know? Uh, I'm... I mean, yeah, like, should we just I'm, hop into I'm, questions? First of all, I, I know I the, wanna, I the story want, I of my name. Say, I just want to say <laughs> this is our first Seven on Sundays guest. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Good I'm, times. Yes. I'm super excited because I've, I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to wiggle Seven on Sundays on to here, but so many of us are like afraid. I tried to, tried to get Karen to talk one day. No, for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let's, for real though, we do want you here. Yeah, all, all, y'all. all y'all, like you're welcome here. We want to hear your voice. Aaron is coming on next. Let's so, so set the tone. All right, I'll set the tone. I'm very honored to be the first Seven on Sunday guest. Um, I feel like from what I've been able to listen to, this is like the who's who in the Chicago running community. Yeah. Oh and so I'm just like, I'm already getting asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like for real, like legit. Like, we both was like, yo, we need to speak to Simeon, like, right now. Right now. Especially after the week you had. Immediately. Like, it's crazy. Like, we're going to do our weekly updates, but yeah. your weekly update is way more lit. Like, I'm super excited to talk about it. So, okay. we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to try to figure this out. We still figuring out, like, the routine of how. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I, like this is reporter Courtney Phillips. Um, <laughs> we still we still on two mics, y'all. Okay? Still on two mics. We working. We figuring it out. But, uh, yeah, like, we going to... I don't know how to do it now. Because, like, we own you now. So, I want to hear. But also, like, I need, to, I need to let y'all know how long of a week it's been. It's been a very long week. And honestly, for the last... Two episodes, maybe three episodes. I've just been using this to vent a little bit. So I appreciate y'all for staying with me and sticking with me. Um, but oh, there we go. Um, I don't know. Nobody asked me how my week was. But how it was, was your awesome. week, Ian? It was awesome. It was <laughs> awesomely long as shit. Um, I, I mean, where did it start? Where the hell did my week start? It started on a Monday. Oh, this was my week with August. So that was mad fun. Oh, yeah. No, I'm trying to find somewhere good to start. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to start on a good note. There was not a lot of good this week. Oh, my God. I think, yeah, so this week was really tough dealing with the business and everything. You know, Mm -hmm. I found out that I'm going to have to start uh, going outside of regular, like, like financial institutions and stuff like that for business loans. I might have to start tapping my network, which I think Gabriel actually learned this week. Karen and Gabriel learned this week that I suck at asking people for like actual like help. Mm -hmm. And so this is a new phase that I'm going into because I do have some people who are willing to help, willing to do the things I do have a hard time. Like Karen asked Gabriel to help me get a couch from my mom's house. (laughs) That's the only way I was going to get it. Because like I couldn't bring myself to ask Gabriel to help me and stuff like that. He was his truck, but that honestly, like, it's, and that's not even a bad thing. It's just me. I, I'm sharing these different parts of my journey because this is my first year in business. I know Courtney has like umpteen years as a businesswoman and things like that. But I'm freshly into my first year and these these things that I'm learning, the mistakes that I've made, the success that I had has just been just amazing but i'm at this new phase where it's just like okay this is what your business needs if you want it to continue to grow continue to succeed you're gonna have to step out of your comfort zone and you know do these things and stuff like that because i am new and so the like even axion if nobody knows axion is it's like a it's a lender but their like business model is also 
business consulting for micro businesses and stuff like that, or solo entrepreneurs, anybody I think under like that makes like under like hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that. Um, but you know, even me being so new, they couldn't all they couldn't loan me the amount that I needed for for the store and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I have to go outside of that and do all of those things. But that was cool. And then we had Saturday with uh with uh the twenty miler, which was excellent. I think me and Courtney can both speak about that a little bit. I was left for that. <laughs> I was left for that. Oh, I mean. I wasn't mad. No one was mad. It happened. Everything went the way it was supposed to go. Yeah. No, I don't think. Yeah. I didn't expect anybody to be mad, but I was like, oh, I was so embarrassed because then I pull up and everybody like clapping. (laughs) It was like, oh, walk of shame. But that whole energy this Saturday is completely what I needed because it was like, what? Y'all started like 5 a.m. Right? Yeah. You did. Yeah. You did mm-hmm. six, but everybody else did like twenty miles and uh, eighteen to twenty miles. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. That I got to get on the grill, cook some meat for my family. I'm gonna hold the mic because I feel like I share it a little bit better. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay. No, you was on the grill and you did fantastic. You the way that you cook. On the grill is very smooth. You don't even notice it, but you get it done. And there was food for everyone and no one was waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I can't wait till we have a camera. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> because the way you pass the mic is what's tickling. Because I know you got something to say. No, I mean, it was it was fun. It was fucking awesome. And everybody, like, that's, that's like, I know, like, the new saying that I'm hearing from everything, everybody's like, when they don't like something, they like, that's not my ministry. Saturday was completely my ministry. Like everybody taking turns in the recovery boots, wiping it down with the Lysol wipes, chilling outside on the deck, uh, eating. It was tied down with Courtney. Like those are the things that like just fill my spirit up completely and make me so happy. So, I mean, my update is really, really short. Sunday was super smooth. I was double dutching i saw you like the way you jumped in i was very surprised <laughs> and, and vanessa caught it on camera and said what can he do and i was like you know what good question because i didn't expect him to just jump straight in there and just double dutch in that way i don't i mean i can't even lie like i try but i don't like i know the rhythm but i always fuck it up every time i was i was just as shocked as everybody else and if they would not have started cheering, I think I could have lasted a little bit longer. But of course, they started cheering, and I got like really excited. And you get a, you get conscious of like of the fact that you're doing I'm it. I'm doing something yeah. right now. <laughs> and it's just like done right. real quick. So that was super smooth. But I mean, I don't know. Right now, I think until marathon, my weekly updates are probably going to be really short because it's a full of emails and really boring content for the podcast. It's just full of full of just so many emails. So many reports. It's wild because it's the, it's this is this week and the weeks up to the marathon equal four weeks. <laughs> I got a free couch. Oh, okay. I'm so excited about that. Where is it from? My mom. Is this the couch that you asked to get help move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, honestly, and honestly, shouts out to Karen. Shorty's strong as hell. I think we all know that. Because Gabriel, like, cut his hand and so he couldn't like act because that was my muscle that was i was asking for his truck but i also needed his body okay mm-hmm. but he came he babysat you know what i'm saying he kept he kept august because august always needs to help so he needed to be distracted so he kept the actually he kept august and i think the dog as well and whose dog my mom's dog okay yeah she, he, she got a little frenchy you know so he took care of them in the backyard while me, Karen, and Julius figured out how to get this couch that was way too big for the stairwell out of said stairwell. And yeah, no, nah, shorty strong as hell. Okay. That's the seven on Sundays team. Yeah. Strong, can it's run whole, forever. It's a family. I mean, yeah. The, I think the whole broader running community is a family with like smaller families within it. Because if you run, you relate in a different way. Um, 
I would say, are, do you have any other updates? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> well, my updates. Uh, I'm gonna be brief because you know I still got a puppy. You guys, Remy. That's her name. She just turned four months on the ninth. Uh, she like is starting to look like a teenager, like a teenage dog. <laughs> like, and if you if you I'm had so a puppy, then you would know. It's like she just all of a sudden starts looking like more like legit, like a, a grown. She's like <laughs> not quite a grown ass dog, but she's starting to look like a grown dog. And I'm just like, whoa. And she's teething and. She's this a lot. And um, I feel, I definitely feel like a dog parent right now. Mm. Like very much so. And we're trying, she went to her first puppy elementary, puppy kindergarten class this past Saturday, which was, well, it was after our Saturday run. And we brought her to the barbecue intentionally because I was telling Karen that when you have a puppy, you have to like expose them to the life that you expect them to be a part of at an early age so that they are accustomed to what their owner does. Yeah. And we are a running couple. So you're going to be out here with everyone. You're going to be in the community. And so yeah. she just needs to figure out, figure it out and like lay down, go to sleep, drink her water, engage with people, be okay with like interactions, socialization. August. <laughs> she was not fucking with August at all. When I tell you August wanted to pet her and play with her so bad, and the whole time she just was backing up, like, no, don't touch me, don't look at me, <laughs> pretend I'm not here. <laughs> like she and yeah, and I like the whole time. It was it's funny because he normally don't want to be around dogs. I think it was because Remy's very shy. Yeah. Also, I haven't really heard Remy bark. Mm. And like she's finding her voice through paint, playing with other dogs. But like recently Matthew walked her and this kid on a little tricycle, like booked it across the entire park just to say hi to Remy. And that was like the first time that she legit was like barking at something. Cause it was the first, like, cause this little, yeah. little, little, hey, little hey, hey, human chill, chill, was chill. like zooming at her trying to be like pet her. So it's like, y'all, you know, respect, respect dogs space. You know what I mean? Like, just don't, don't just like, and also don't let your kids just go running after them. You didn't do that. That wasn't August. August was nice. He was, you know, I think Remy's just skeptical of all small humans. But this (laughs) child on a tricycle was out of pocket. Um, So there's that. And um, Matthew was so cute with August, too. Yeah, he's going to be a good dad. Yeah, he was like super cute with August. (laughs) It was like, it was like them and like, he was holding like August's hand and then walking the dog. It was like it was it was adorable. <laughs> Which I, I could have caught a photo. <laughs> I missed all of that. Yeah, it was. I didn't cute. even. I didn't see it. It was hella cute. Um, I'm just happy that your dog is looking like a teenager. Why you say that? Because I told Aaron, I well, I'm going to need you and Courtney to to stop mentioning y'all dogs in the same conversation as my human child. Okay. <laughs> I really not try not to do that. I really try not to do that. I'm just saying, you know, when you have a puppy, it's like a, it's like, it's a baby. It's a baby. They are a child. Like, it's just weird. Have you ever had a puppy? Yeah, I've had dogs my whole life. A puppy? Yeah. Where you had to take care of it only? I mean, I've only been an adult for a short period of time. So, no. No, I guess not. So, no. you don't know what I'm talking about. And I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I guess you got a point. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just when I tell a story about August, and then Aaron goes, uh, "Yeah, you know, Chanel, same thing. I had the da da da. No, nigga, it's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, when da 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 with Chanel, it's like, okay, no, stop. <laughs> you cannot. It doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I hear you. But I respect all the love and not everything that y'all go through because y'all actually have to get up and leave the house when that dog has to use the bathroom. Several times. Yeah. August is at the stage I'm like, he gets up at 2 a.m., has to use the bathroom and be like, you know where it is. (laughs) Just go. I'll be here when you get back. Yeah. And the dog is like forever reliant on you to go to the bathroom. Honestly, I I date a woman with a child if I date a woman with a dog. Interesting. Simeon, you can inject, interject yeah, at sure. any point. I guess it's yeah. like, no, you got something to say. No, I feel like uh, it's just like a break because I've listened to y'all and it's just interesting to see <laughs> it in front of me. So I'm like just observing. But uh, yeah, at least on this, I I have seen some dog owners like train their dogs to like let them know when they need to use the restroom where you just unlock the door and they kind of take care of themselves and they come back. That's and wild. that's like some next level things that I just recently learned that was even possible with dogs. For sure. But and if so, you live on the third floor of an apartment, 
yeah, that's that has not several option. doors. The goal is eventually to have like a little house situation. Yeah. yeah. Which I honestly think is what happened that a couple of weeks ago when Ian and I, and I were out uh, on the 606, we saw like a random dog on the trail. And I think that was one of the things. You think um, you I was, think that's what was going it was on. Out, it was just out for a bathroom. It was a pit bull just on the 606 at like one o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. With a handkerchief <laughs> oh, shit. around his neck. It's like a yeah. bandana or something. Like, what's up? Yeah, it was yeah. going for his late night walk. Yeah. We, you, li- we literally stopped running and walked past it. That's wild. When we adopted, uh, I almost called her Penny, Remy. Um, when we adopted Remy, Paz told us, like, if you leave your dog outside, like, you know how people leave their dogs, like, mm-hmm. in front of a Starbucks to go get a, a drink. If you do that, you technically have abandoned your dog in the state of Illinois, and anyone can take your dog, and you can't oh, like, I'm finna press start charges. Taking niggas dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, let me find a Rhodesian. Uh, what's this dog I just found on the Instagram? It's this Rhodesian African something back, and it's like it can run, and it's like brown. Oh yeah, oh, I'm on the lookout. Uh, you will, and and. Because of that, a lot of people have been stealing dogs through the pandemic because there's been a shortage because everybody's been getting dogs. Oh, so people have just been stealing people's dogs. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I heard that like now that things are opening up again, mm-hmm. a lot of people are actually returning their dogs, which is I also bet. really sad. That's wow. really sad. Wow. Yeah. That's really fucking sad. Mm-hmm. Damn. Damn. Damn, that's cr- I don't even that's know where really to go sad. from that. Like. Yeah, okay. It's called a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Let's see a picture. Oh, shit. I can find a better picture. For the listeners, I'm you, you should to brighten you up have your to describe what this dog looks like. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but... Yeah, but... Y'all be noticing. <laughs> no, y'all got to keep talking. We on a podcast. Well, well you talking. You about to show me a photo. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful dog. Right? And it can do like... And it's like a medium size. I think that's like the size Remy's going to be. It's a very good athletic it's dog. dog. It's a beautiful dog. They hunt lions. That's crazy. That's what they do. That's wild. Yeah. So if if you are in the High Park neighborhood, Bronzeville neighborhood, with a Rhodesian Ridgeback, I am currently looking for two. Please go get iced coffee. Wow. <laughs> Please. Let's <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, that's basically my week. And enough about us. Enough about me. Yeah, that's all I got. Is I'm a dog parent. So Simeon, yes. how was your week? Yeah, uh, we can work backwards. Um, uh, from yesterday, I was actually in this neighborhood. I got to go to uh, a chakra like unlocking learning session and how to like wrap your own. I guess it's like a smudge wand is what they call it. That was hosted over here at the uh, Lululemon Oasis. Lit. Uh, being offered by the very human social. And so the, this is, that was just to kind of cap um, the week off of just recovery. Um, but the thing that's really interesting that like you brought, Ian brought up about just like asking for help. Um, that was like one of the things at least for one of my chakras where it was like, you are really great at envisioning things, but when it comes to like asking for help, this is like one of those things that or your chakra is closed mm. or in, uh, inactive. Mm. And so that's like one of the things at least where I'm like having a, a bit more particular uh, attention to. Um, but yeah, it was that. I, I got to do my first run um, in a week with Seven on Sunday yesterday, Ooh. which was really great. Um, like I was able to do that without many aches or pains. Can we, can I pause you for a second? Yeah. Cause like, I just, cause I would love to do just a quick intro. Okay, great. Just before we get into all of those yeah, amazing, just like, who is this person that details. is talking to? Tell us who Simeon is. Great. Um, yeah, where I'll, are you I'll from? go ahead. Let's start yeah, with uh, that. I'll, I'll go ahead and do like a whole intro. So, uh, for the folks listening in, if you're on a run or at work, um, I hope that y'all are taking it easy and, you know, you finish strong. Um, so thank you all for having me and join uh, this conversation. They're going to love your voice. And whether you're on this run, so you know, nice. stay smooth <laughs> and, and we're going to get through it together. Uh, but a little bit about me. Um, my name, again, my name is Simeon Jacob. I come to you all um, through... Uh, 
traditional Cowlitz and Multnomah land, which is also known as Portland, Oregon. Uh, Wait, was, what? See, this is why I opened up his Instagram because this Cowlitz? whole time I've been staring at this, I have no idea what these words mean. <laughs> yeah. So it? you see this? Yeah. Explain. So yeah. Uh, like, okay. so I guess another little bit. I'm, Wait, I'm pause again. I'm pause. sorry. Y'all okay. are going to be so annoyed by me, but I just want to acknowledge the fact that Ian never looks at anybody's Instagram profiles. And so he's never even seen what I'm talking about. But if you go to Simeon's Instagram, and his Instagram is Simeon Jacob, S-I-M-E-O-N, Jacob, no space. And you see like where he has some information on there, like his background. And I've always just been a little perplexed, but I wasn't trying to jump in his, in his DMs. Like, yo, what, like, I want to know more. Like, I would rather just have you on the, on the podcast and for you to explain. But of course, Ian doesn't know because why? Cause I don't, I don't be looking at y'all shit like that. I just, <laughs> I just look Annoying. at the profile picture, make sure it's you. And I will like your stuff when you pop up. So you continuously pop up on time. Ian's never going to read your bio. I'm That's not. fine. Maybe once. But I'm pretty sure the first time I looked at that, I was like, my brain did not register that shit. I was like, no, for sure. This is not even a word. <laughs> this is not a word. <laughs> so, yeah, continue. All right, yeah, let's jump into it. Like, so yeah. it's like three A's and 12 K's in that word. Yeah, that's the name of the uh, traditional tribe or like the original people here in uh, Chicago. I think it's called the Kikapoi. Um, and the, those oh, are the original. That's not no, that's. That's here. Yeah, that's, oh, I wanted to, like, one of the things, uh, like, I'm Pacific Islander, and, like, one of the things is a lot of identity and tradition and practices are tied to the land. And so, uh, like, in Oregon, that's one of the things that uh, I've been able to, in my social justice activism, I've been able to learn um, about that importance and just where there is that intersection between um, the indigenous people there, uh, um, as well as, like, where I'm from. And so that's one of the things where, uh, you know, instead of calling it by the the names that like the colonizers or the first, like the, uh, yeah, instead of Say like that. the colonies, colonizers, we, we uh, acknowledge who the real original people are. And so that's where in my introduction, I, I want to make sure that I put respect on the lands that I, I, I have been able to occupy. Mm. So. It's called the Acapora. What is what, what's the word that's in your bio? So, uh, in Portland, it's uh, the traditional lands of the Cowlitz as well as uh, Multnomah, um, as well as like the traditional band of the Chinook, as well as like the Mon uh, Molala, as well as the Kalapuya. Uh, and there's a lot of different overlap of where um, the where I I got to live and grow up. Yeah. But um, essentially, I grew up in the southeast quadrant of uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, and so I've been there for 29 years of my life and uh, just recently moved here to Chicago. So not the coast. Not the coast. What, what's it like over there? Uh, the coast? No, where you're from. Uh, Sounds like it's very like woodsy. It is really woodsy. Uh, I think that's where, you know, you find a lot of crunchy people. Um, crunchy granola people. Yeah, real granola. Like I think that's the, it. That's <laughs> what I call my people in Minnesota, granola. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but um, one of the things is like there's a lot of trees. I think that's one of the things you'll notice is how green it is. And I think when you get off the plane, uh, you'll even feel how fresh the air is, and mm -hmm. it just feels good to breathe. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So, like, did they like so? When you're when you're born in a hospital, I'm assuming you get a, your mom get got a couple fresh diapers, probably a blanket for you to swaddle until you got home, a pair of running <laughs> shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, it it's more so on my dad's side. So I'll, I'll, I'll so my mom, she is from uh, Da Nang, Vietnam, and then my dad is from Pingalup, which is a small atoll island. Um, of Pompeii, which is part of the federal states of federated states of Micronesia, which is uh, out in the northern Pacific. Mm. And so, um, it, the running so history, many yeah, so many, so, so like many, an so many, yeah, it's a lagoon essentially. If we if we a pulled lagoon. it up uh, on Google Maps, you'll see that uh, Pingalup is a a huge like lagoon, and then it's kind of like a crescent of the island. Wait, are you? F wait, is it the? Is it the? Wait, is that like, hold on. Where is that? Is it like near Australia? 
So uh, is it like that's a great cre- reference point. So if you because n- I, Australia no, second bruh, bump isn't it okay, north bruh oh my god okay your fan okay hmm, I'm tr- tweaking right now because yes theory which I don't know if you know yes theory I am familiar with yes they theory. traveled to like they like decided to travel to like the least traveled to place in the world and it was this island that was like this hook and it was like water in the middle and it's like surrounded by water all around it. Is that the same place? I will have to check. I because think they went to wild. went to the Marshalls. Because it's it's like, and you can drive, and they you can drive like the whole crescent of it. Uh huh. If yeah. you're from there, I'm going to freak out. I don't know if it's the same exact island, but it's like it's similar. we're the same island nations. Wild. Do your people sleep on those straw beds? I think so. I'm pretty sure that's. I, I'm pretty sure that like the, folks have advanced their sleeping no, technology, but I, mean like, but I think they're not on like, the mats. Don't, don't, see, don't come for me. You're not come for me. If you're listening. Don't the come mats, for me. yeah. But the mats, they look comfortable. I'm not. I'm not. This is not shade. I'm just like just trying to like the mats on the concrete slabs. And, yeah. Yeah. It, and it's like comfy. What's, what? What? Is I'm looking at a mat. You're right. not gonna find it. I've never heard any of these. This words. is wild. This That's is dope. wild. Yeah. Cool. Do you gonna, visit? Can, why do you get way more interesting every time that I speak to you? This is stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I don't have an answer to that, but uh, I don't know. The, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> do you visit these islands? No, I visit? so this that's actually a really exciting question to be asking because I I'm actually planning on visiting or moving. I, I haven't decided what the timeline is for how long I'm planning on being there, but. That's something that's coming up very soon. But what would running be like? Uh, I've seen there are places to run, but no, it'll I be know really that, flat. But I'm saying like, uh, I've heard that there's a such thing as like island fever, where it's like even if you're, I was talking to another runner about this who's thinking about moving and considered moving to an island, but decided to move inland, like on a like a more land connected to land. Uh-huh. Because it's like if you're on an island, you can literally run around it. What would you get sick of that? And of course, this is me jumping ten steps ahead, but I'm just no for sure. I guess it out there. like if I were to jump a little bit uh, to why I what prompted you all to bring me here yeah. is that I did spend a huge chunk of time on a very short landmass running back and forth. Oh, okay. For 29 hours, My man. Yeah. which okay, okay, is okay, okay, okay. a thing, okay, okay. which we can oh, come back to. Yeah, right, right, which is right. okay. And okay. I'm not trying to right. prolong this. No, I'm just very interesting I, about your background. I think right. it, it is a really great question and something that I have a little bit of anxiety about. Of like, if I'm really about to move here, uh, where am I going to be running after how, this many months? And especially at sea level, where I don't get the benefits of like building up my VO2 max, and and so that's like one of the things where. Uh, thankfully, or one of the things I've considered is like, well, I'm not too far away from New Zealand or Australia True. or even to Japan. Yeah. Um, and so that's like one of the things where I have like really considered like, all right, I should at least start building like a travel budget where I'm able to like do these running retreats where I can uh, not be doing uh, rounds behind around the island, which is kind of interesting that you bring up because there there is like this uh annual race or sometimes even consider like a rite, rite of passage that they call uh the Pitekteka. and it's a inner island race where you kind of have to really test the local knowledge of uh what is the best way to run um f- from literally one island to another mm. um because there are really shallow parts in the reef that you're able to do so. Um, so that's one of the things where I'm like, I would really love to learn how to literally run from one island to another, which is like, that's, that's not possible. Like, unless wild. unless you learn how to run a run on become, water, right. right? And be very familiar with the area, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that I've considered is like, all right, I'm going to need to like be very conscious about visiting other places in the world to be able to get some good long miles because yeah trying to do a long run we're going to be having to do some laps yeah but um do you have any questions like about we can get into it more but i mean clearly we asked you for here to be we asked you here for a very specific reason and i know ian's like on the tip of his chair 
so excited to talk about Listen, it. Listen, I am. And so just, I'm just going to let you introduce the, the the topic of the evening. I am like, I am just. Yeah, if you want, we can continue doing origin show. stories. And this is like, where you can is, continue. This is your origin back. story. Just it, it just opens up so much. It's amazing. Like, I, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Okay. All right. Do I just like continue? I didn't come with shoes when I was born. If the, that was one of the things I wanted to address that, that didn't happen, but I do come no, from a lineage there. of folks in my family who did did run and specifically and ran that. between islands. Yeah, that's crazy because I was really just that was a joke just about you being from Portland, which is of course where Nike's from. So and Adidas, like, right? That's what they be running. We don't talk about that. Adidas is German. I know, but like they have a headquarters in. Yeah, yeah I'm it's, just saying. I'm just saying. No. I know it's fr- okay. I'm just saying. No, I know you know. Yeah. I'm just letting them know. They, they facts. Yep. Yeah. Jeremy. Know that. <laughs> yep. But yeah, there, it's become quite a hub like down in Portland. Like I think Under Armour, Under Armour yep. has like a headquarters there now. And so I think maybe we, I heard y'all talk about this of just like, like even the potential turf wars of like who, who do you rep? But uh, yeah, it's definitely Nike is a huge hub. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a Nike, but uh no, I mean, so yeah, like the reason where I want to hear about Hood the Coast and a Speedy Project, like those are the two things that you have done within what ten days, probably even within seven. Oh yeah, I yeah. What, I did like a whole race series where it was Thursday Thursday night. I did take the bridge, which was my third like appearance of the oh, summer, shit, where I was right. at take the bridge. Which is where I met like a lot of the community here in Chicago, um, and then the following morning is when I did Hood to Coast, and the following weekend I was back here and yeah. I did uh, the Speed Project, and so that's one of the things so, where. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back. Yep, let's step back a it. little bit. Uh, let's start off with Hood to Coast. Okay. Okay, because they that they, they we need to get there before we understand how ill the Speed Project would. So the Hood to Coast. Can you explain to everybody what? Hood to Coast was? Sure. So the Hood to Coast is a relay race that starts from Mount Hood or Y East um, and goes 198 miles from the the Hood or like Timberline Lodge, goes down the mountain um, into the valley going through Portland and then back up into the mountain range into Seaside. Hard is very beautiful, right? It is really beautiful. Um, you get a lot of farmland. You get to run through a lot of forests. Um, like this is split between two vans, 12 individuals. Um, and yeah, I think you get a lot of different, uh, yeah, you get a lot of different scenery. Yeah. Um, but so I think that's a total miles for the team. Um, it ranges. So but, but 12, the 12 people um, splitting the 198 miles, I think it like comes between uh, like 15 to I think maybe tops 19 miles per person. Per person. And so that, that's like something that you end up doing in a span of 24 hours. And so it's like for those who are in like their marathon uh, training cycle, I feel like that's uh, like a fragmented long run yeah, yeah. Um, in sense. And yeah, so. definitely, definitely. And who, like, so the people you're on the team with, people, how many people was it? It was 12. It was and 12. then uh, in each of our vans, um, it was six people each van. And so it was like, it almost felt like a shift where it's like the first van would go um, and they would get the thing started off at Timberline Lodge, come all the way down the mountain. We'd tag, tag in and then they would be able to take a break and then van two would go and then work their way from uh, Sandy, and then all the way down to the river, um, right in the middle of of Portland. And then we tagged back in. We got a chance to take a break. Um, have by that time it was like lunchtime for us, so we had like uh, lunch, took a nap, and then met them out um, like right at the beginning of like the next mountain range. And then we had like night running, and so then we mm-hmm. worked our way through the, the mountains, and then uh, then met. Back up, I think, which was uh, about 36 miles from the coast. And then we finished finished off um, that Saturday morning. Wow. Um, how was the elevation? Like, was there, like, what What did you have to do to train for it? Um, 
That's a really great question. I don't, I didn't train for this. There are people who definitely train for it. And I think if it, if you were to train for it, I think it's more so getting used to running at certain times of the, t- uh, of the day. Of day, of the day. Um, because for me, I had a, and which I really lucked out for my first leg was, uh, I think like 10 a.m. Um, my second leg was at like midnight. And then my last one was like at 5 a.m. So, mm. but there are like some other folks who are just, yeah, I think the night running portion is like one of the things that people really had to prepare Like not for. night, like mid, like the time you would be sleeping night. Yep. Not yeah. like, oh, it's nine o'clock. Like it's one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. One o'clock, two o'clock. Uh, like in the hours where we're definitely just like sleeping. And so that, I think that's like one of the things, at least for elevation, uh, I guess like if it depends on where you live. If you live in mm-hmm. Oregon, I think it, you're just normal. like always in elevation. Like where I was staying, I lived on a hill and like a hill, hill where it's like for two, three miles, you're just either going up or going down um, rather than like the 200, 300 meters that I've like experienced here of like incline. Yeah. Um, and so that's like one of the things where I was there for two weeks beforehand. And so I think I got that window of like being able to fully adjust and mm. get get my legs ready again. Um, but yeah, I think it, that's like the getting your rhythm. I think it's most like how much can you adapt to just being out of rhythm or uh, being uncomfortable, which I think is a lot of our training is. Yeah. yeah. 2000%, 2000%. Y'all like in an RV was like just vans, vans, like uh, like church vans. We no, had, you, you guys were in BMW. Yeah, we had uh, some sprinters. BMW sprinters. Oh, sprinters. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were I fancy. knew it. All black oh. yeah. BMW sp- or like uh, Mercedes sprinters. Yeah, Mercedes. I was, yeah. Mercedes sprinters. Yeah, Mercedes sprinters. Okay. Y'all. That's what I yeah. would do. I feel like if I was on the team, we would be do- in those. Oh, my God. <laughs> that we're renting. Probably be like the the beamer sprinters the beamer sprint or no i'm sorry i keep getting them mixed up <laughs> the mercedes sprinters mercedes sprinters oh, yep that's how we got to do it this year and i, I that's my preference um because you get a lot of leg room if you really wanted you could clear out the back um rows mm-hmm. um so you like use to stretch or prep um for your legs mm-hmm. um but yeah the, the first time i did it it was actually in a in a van, so it was like really packed. No, thank you. Yeah. So, did you know these people? I did. The, at least the folks in my van. Yeah. Uh, like the how it came about. One of my friends who does work with Nike, they found the group on a Slack channel, and they're like, "We need folks." And mm. so uh, he uh, shout out to Junior. Thank you for bringing us together. It was like one of these things where once we. Uh, came together i recognized that he was the person really pulling the strings of bringing us all together um but yeah it was uh i got to meet him actually through the speed project um which we got to do um which is another uh relay race which i'll be able to speak to a bit more but um that was one of the things that felt really important was like for our van we have a vibe we're gonna make a playlist we're gonna do check-ins we're gonna and it was really beautiful like some of the things that they did um because they reached out to Ian as well as like folks uh, as as well as Austin um, to send like a a video recording of just like, hey, we're thinking about you. You got this. I saw that. That was really sweet. um, That was like really touching to know that um, I have a lot of love uh, coming from Chicago. And that's like one thing that uh, I really have. I feel really blessed um, of just how open and uh, welcoming that y'all have been and so yeah, yeah. kind of like popped up one yeah essentially you and your hair just showed up and just it's been you it's just been love for you ever since so uh, i don't know that's, that's <laughs> what i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah and i guess if you want to know how i even found seven on sunday it was like I had been in chicago for two months at that point and i was part of like trying to just join any kind of Strava challenge to stay motivated to run. Um, Cause I think the, the wonder of like, oh, I'm in a new city. I'm going to see as much as I can um, really kind of starts to wear off. And so I was like, all right, I needed to find some motivation. Mm-hmm. And I got put into uh, this group um, 
where I got to meet Austin, Austin Miller. And I was like, I, you live in this city. I need somebody to run with. <laughs> and he was like, yo, just come through the seven on Sunday. Shout they meet here and here. Um, and so uh, it took me a couple of weeks when then I, my first time, uh, yeah, I, I came there. And yeah, then you've only been running with us for like about four months, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's like really, really, really new and stuff. And I like Aaron, Aaron says like, you're probably the fastest transplant that we've met that's made it to the south side because you currently live in way unnecessarily far north. Yeah. Where do you live right now? I live in a neighborhood called North Mayfair. Where is that? It's like, all right. It's, it's like off cool. of the Kennedy Expressway, off of Foster. and Oh, like I drive past that when I'm going to the airport. Yep, exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's far. That's far, too. Yep. And then you come all the way south side? Yeah. Yeah, because they were the first, y'all were the first people to respond back to me of like, yeah, come through. Um, <laughs> like, like there, there are some groups that are up there, but it was like, join this mailing list. And it felt kind of impersonal. And For so sure. I was like, you know, I'm trying to, like, I think that's one thing I've grown up with is just like valuing community and people who don't need to, who create, like, to me, like, though, like a newsletter feels like a barrier of like, if you want to have access. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was like one of the things. Well, that, I'm, I'm completely happy. Yeah. And I've been, we enjoyed it. We've enjoyed having you and running with you and hanging out on the rocks at the promontory point mm -hmm. on Sundays and stuff like that. That's been super amazing. And then I think it just, I, it just really hit a head thing for the crew. I was like, Oh yeah. Like he said, he's, He's seven on Sundays, like um, for your speed project, which you want a six oh six. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we you started running Saturday morning, right? At, at like what eleven something? Okay, well, first of all, so you ran. This is hood to coast. Yeah, so I did. Hood How to much coast. time between that and the next race? I think it was like six days. Okay, and then and so then now we're talking about. The speed the project. The speed project. Yeah. And just, for those who don't know what the speed project is, can you explain what that is? Yeah. So there's these two gentlemen out of LA who like created this concept of just like uh, who can run the fastest from point A to point B. And it originally started a race from uh, Santa Monica Pier um, in LA to the Las Vegas sign um, in Las Vegas. Um, and so that was, it started a, uh, that was uh, 340 miles. Um, and then I think as time has passed, people have found like quicker ways and more direct ways to get <laughs> because there. Because there is no official route. Yeah, exactly. And it's how fast can you get there? Mm -hmm. So. Yep. And so uh, <laughs> that's where it started. And uh, in response to the pandemic, they created like a DIY version. So it was like, how, who can run the most miles um, based off of the course record? And so um, I think last year it was 31 hours. And then um, this year, that year, uh, the record got broken by some folks who uh, are who live here in Chicago. And then I think some folks up in Minneapolis. Um, Shout out to my people in Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> um, who set the record for 29 hours and 51 uh, minutes um, for what the course record was. And so that's how much time we had on the clock to run. Um, as many miles as we could. And how many did you run? I ended up running 98 and a half. Woo! 98 miles. Yep. That, that was that was crazy. Yeah. That was like crazy. And like, keep in mind, like you have, there's multiple ways to sign up for this race. You can do it as a squad. Yep. He did this on his own. He didn't ask anybody to run this with him. He went from a sprinter to his car <laughs> in a matter of six days and did 30 hours on his own on the 606. And the 606, if anybody doesn't know, it's up in Wicker Park and it's just a three mile running path or a walking path. It's, it's three miles from end to end and yep. stuff like that. And so he did 98 miles on a three mile stretch of land. How did you, how, like, for, okay, I my question, is, it may be y'all, you think this is dumb, but I just want to know what did you pack for food? Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, I really loved the 
the first fruit of all, the cooler, was, the cooler he yeah. had was about as big as Kyle. That's what yeah. <laughs> when Ian told me when I was watching, I was like, I want to know what he's eating. Like, I want to know what the refuel is looking like to get through all that by yourself. Yeah. So uh, it was like I'm trying to recall bananas. Definitely were one of right, my favorites. Right. Uh, the fruit pouches um, where you can just like squeeze into your mouth. Um, I had like the fruit strips, uh, Snickers bars. Um, I had like the, those protein cookies and I was just doing a lot of goose to be honest. So you didn't even have a sandwich? Oh yeah, I did have a couple of wraps. I forgot about oh, that. The thing is, is that God, they were, they were kind of like, some probiotic pickles. Yeah, probiotic. Uh, so those are the things. Bagel. Yeah, there, I got <laughs> okay. that. That was one I'm of the like, things. Those the are the food? things. So the thing is, is I didn't really pack like food, food, and that's when like the seven on Sunday crew came in super clutch. Is they like brought like actual food, um, and so yeah, I got. The, the probiotic pickle is mentioned. Uh, I got a peanut butter bagel in the morning and then uh, I got a burrito for for evening. Um, but really it was snacks, which I was like, I think is like some foresight. Uh, or I was like, I don't know why I didn't think about this. Because mm-hmm. um, I did in July a 24 hour challenge to kind of just figure out what it would mean for me to do this and try to figure out some kinks and strategy. Right. Um, and but yeah, uh, I had I think I there was like a couple of Red Bulls in there. Um, I wanted to bring like the small cokes, but um, yeah, I, I think I I tried the cokes on the long run last weekend, and I was like, I get it, but I also could just like drink noon and then eat a uh, fruit leather for sure. A noon with caffeine and then fruit leather. Yeah. So then fruit that's that's just sugar. It's you know what I'm talking the, about. I I call them strips. Fruit uh, strips. It's called fruit. Like it's fruit like, leather. Because like it is kind of like it's leather, like, like the texture. Rubber. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Um. Yeah. Because like people drink Coke because it's sugar ca- and caffeine. Yeah, and it it's also and the calorically dense. Like you'll, it's like uh, almost oh. three hundred oh, calories. Oh, calories! That part. Yep, that, that part. part. Okay, so now I okay, mm, that's why. But I, I'm I'm asking because with our runners, like the cohort and everything like that, it's like I'm. We are talking about the fact that like real food is important. Oh yeah, totally. And it's like you can you can take changer. as many goons as you want <laughs> and eat like you know this or that. But at the end of the day, it's Very like obvious. you're eating candy and you're like. Take, taking liquid carbs and it's like yeah. your body wants a fucking sandwich <laughs> okay mm-hmm. um so yeah that's why i was just curious because um i feel like you didn't break 100 i feel like you didn't break 100 because you spent a lot of intimate time with that peanut butter bagel <laughs> oh. oh yeah no there was a lot of moments where i was like you know if i just i like, kept walking <laughs> instead of like really chilling because that was one of the things where like uh, and I didn't learn this until after that other people had very different strategies where some folks like went hard um, for like two hours and then took a break for four hours and yeah. then went back at it again where yeah. I was like, I'm just, just gonna going to try to go, keep go, go, go. going and then like take these really small 30 minute breaks to just get off my feet and just like do as much massage to kind of keep things loose. Um, so, so would you do it differently if you did it again? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was one of the things where I was like even contemplating where I was like, all right, I'm going to just try to get to 100 as fast as I can and then just like just walk yeah. and then chill and then whatever is left for that last half hour, then just try to rack up even like the last bit of miles. Because it was so, we were so worried about leaving you because uh, I think what me, Denise, Gabe, uh, Karen, we all met up with you. What like really late? Yeah, like like maybe like nine thirty. I think Karen was out there a little bit earlier than that, right? Yeah, they they met up with me at like yeah nine thirty ten o'clock, and then ran with stuck with me until like one thirty. Yeah, we said um, like one thirty in the morning. Yep, that's wild. Yeah, and that was a huge chunk of miles that we put together. Um, after like, yeah, it was it was one at of those things. Time you've been running since. 6 a.m. 12 hours. Yeah. Are you even running? Are you started at 6 a.m.? Yeah, I started at 6 a.m. Oh, okay. Yep. So started from 6 a.m. and then went till uh, 
essentially noon the next day. Yeah. And then we were, we pulled back up on you at in like, the morning. I think because like that night, at some point that night, I don't even know. It had to have been somewhere between like eleven thirty and one o'clock in the morning. We made the decision to switch our seven on Sundays meetup to the six oh six and stuff like that. And so, I, well, I don't know, because I, I was at home asleep. I was tired mm-hmm. after staying up with you that late. I did not make it to, to 7 a.m., but I was there at 8 a.m. And uh, what? Rode our bikes back and forth um, until you finished yep. and stuff like that, which was just awesome to watch you run and continue. Like, And it wasn't like slow. Like my man's was not running slow. Like I was pedaling the entire time. Yeah, it, it definitely. I think when the Kanye came on, I, or just like the music, it really helped. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it was like one of those things where like I started out with a pretty decent pace. I think I like if we want to talk about it, like I, I ran like a marathon and in, in under like right at four hours, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll just, uh, just take it easy. Like to be honest, like I didn't know who was really gonna show up. Because I had made a very soft ask because I think that week before or like leading up to the week, there was uh, like a, a COVID scare of like someone in our group has COVID. And so I was like, well, it's not a good idea for try to call everyone to kind of g- gather up. So I was like, well, if you're able to come out. I would really enjoy it. Um, and so I think that was one of the things where uh, I hadn't heard anything by the first 26. And so I was like, you know. My my why does not feel strong enough to like really push through this, and uh, I at that point I was like, if I I feel okay stopping at, at twenty six and just my calling it a weekend, to call it a day. Yeah, and I was ready. Up. And then yeah, that was when people started showing up, and I think that was one of the things that was really beautiful was that um, like even what I had in my mind of what was possible, like because y'all continued showing up for me, uh, that continued to get pushed further of like, what is the the real threshold of what my my body is able to take on? And so that's like one of the things that I just wanna continue giving gratitude um, for how you all showed up for me. Cause I think that was one of the things is like, I know for sure that in that final hour, I would, would not have run anywhere as fast as I did if you weren't hyping me up uh, bicycle side um, for, the last hour serenading him with Kanye bars. Yep. For the, for the last hour, and yep. I was like, I was like scared too because I was like, I put out some heavy hitters, and and everybody who knows me knows like I don't I don't do hype music and stuff like that. It's mad chill, it's a whole vibe. But like, so I pulled out like I went deep into the bag yeah. <laughs> to find some like hype ass music for you to ride to. And I think when we got to the opposite end, the west end of the six oh six. I was pressed. I was like, oh shit, I think I went too hard too early. Like, what am I going to play <laughs> to get him to the end of this thing? Like, I ain't even going to lie. Like, I was playing like some of the repeats. Like, when I was, like, they'll do the first verse and I started over. That was just because by that point of the song, I had no idea what I was going to play next and I needed a little bit more time. <laughs> okay. I thought it was a DJ trick of like, no, you need to really hear this first verse. <laughs> I was, Run it back. <laughs> I was lying through my teeth. I was like, what the fuck am I going to play next? We, well, I think we started off with uh, with uh, Watch the Throne and ended up... No, we started off with Graduation. Went to... Uh, can't Tell Me Nothing. Yeah, Can't Tell Me Nothing. And then went to my Doctors of Fantasy to Watch the Throne. And luckily, we finished strong. We finished like a with, true millennial. But like... <laughs> Like we was playing the music loud as hell on the six oh six. It was like, it was like call the police loud at like eleven a.m. in the morning, and like yelling at the top of our lungs, Kanye lyrics. And I mean, like, like bleach my asshole, Kanye. <laughs> That's a good song. <laughs> so we were just being ignorant on the six oh six to finish this last joint up. Which is funny because when I uh, went to Edge Lounge this past week for recovery, uh, some folks were like, oh, yeah, I actually saw you out there. And I was like, wanted to ask like, oh, when did you see me? Did you see me on Sunday? <laughs> when we're, we're really wild or Saturday when I was just like out there. 
<laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, no, it, it, it I, what I, I, I'm this last week, I have grown to respect you so much. Like you, you super cool from day one, but just, uh, I, I, it's neither one of these things on their own are small feats, mm-hmm. you know, and to see you do these things in such a short period of time, even, even honestly, to take the bridge race, it's not like, it's not for the faint at heart, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Even when the one they did in Chicago, which wasn't really a bridge, like, it was still a pretty tough ass run. And so to do that, then hood to coast, then come back and do the speed project, like, like you're a really, really, really solid, strong runner. And it was it it it's motivated me. Like, um, if I if I didn't have my injury with my little leg or whatnot, and I'm disrespecting you leg, little ass leg. <laughs> but uh I mean, like you that shit made me want to like really attack this four hour marathon go. Cause I was mm-hmm. like, it's possible no, after watching this. Like honestly, like it was watching you for me was akin to watching the Kipchoge doc. Yeah. Like that's the hype that I felt. Like when you when when we hit 2951, uh 51, I felt like I ran for like 98 miles. That's how I felt. I felt accomplished. No, yeah, that was it. <laughs> and I think that's one thing that I felt was like I I understand I was the person who ran all of these miles, but I, if anything this was a shared uh accomplishment cuz I know that by myself I would have not done it. Um, I, I felt really cool with, you know, um, compromising the vision, uh, <laughs> a little bit, but I think that, yeah, one of the things that, uh, for me felt like a, a breakthrough was at Hood to Coast where I, I got to break my 5k and 10k like PRs, not Damn. like just like a season, but like lifetime. Like this period. is the fastest I've, I've ever ran before. And, uh, and though they had been in place for, uh, close to 10 years and wow. that, that was like the, uh, like I, y'all were talking about how oh I, when I used to be fast like that was something that I was telling myself of like oh when I used to be this and that was something that I was kind of freaking out about for some time where I was like what if I did a uh, peak in high school and that, that mm, you're is like, like the nightmare <laughs> um, to, um, and that was like one of the things where how old uh, are you now? I'm 29 okay yeah so I'm not quite uh October. This is when I joined the 30 Club. When's your birthday? October 7th. Weird. Matthews is the 8th. Word. Okay. Yep. You're a Libra. That is correct. It's interesting. Is it? It is interesting. Probably, probably I don't, I'm just saying. It's just interesting. <laughs> well, Libra is a, their scales. And so, you know, they they value balance or harmony. And so, you and know. And they're air. And we're air signs. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, that's why I say Matthew gasses me up. Yeah. Because I'm fire. Are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, wherever you're able to find truth, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that was like one of the. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say to people when you're like, I, whatever. <laughs> you're like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry if that feels like the downplay, but I, it's like a, a thing. Like uh, why I found myself at this sh- the, like chakra like workshop where I was like, I'm like really curious of like trying to understand where folks like find truth and you know if there's some things that resonate. Like that's that's cool. Um, otherwise, it, it, I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I was when we had like uh, okay, you're right. When we had like. Um, mm-hmm. A uh, uh, little yoga thing with Meta House at Last Lap. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was you, Maya, Austin. Uh, I forget who else who came, but uh, I mean, I was I was paired with the the instructor and in Austin. I forget what the question was, but it was like a deep little question to get to know the people you were with. But you and Maya was sitting across from each other, and I mean, like. I think I don't even know if you had met Maya before or not, but mm-hmm. it was like really asking some really thoughtful ass questions. Maya Jackson Gibson. Yeah, yeah, all of that, all three names. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he was asking us some. You, I can see on her face, she was like, "Oh wow," uh, and you know, and then like formulating these answers and stuff like that. So it's uh really, man. I don't like I say all that. Say like, you know. 
finding that peace and harmony and mm-hmm. want, seeking truth and understanding, like I, I, I can see it in in your actions and stuff like that. I've seen it in real life. What? I spoke to an energy worker a couple, like two weeks ago, a week ago. Reiki? No, it wasn't Reiki, although she's learning Reiki. Um, she's like studying energy work and she was reading my... Um, chakras and she saw like it was like my third eye and also my solar plexus and yeah solar plexus is such a weird word it it sounds like really like it sounds like something i should cover up like it sounds a little sexy it's kind of like your belly button is it solar plexus just sound a little like promiscuous like (laughs) like it just sounds a little wow it's like up there with like penis and vagina I mean, yeah. Is that what you get out of it? When no. I get solar plexus, like, like when she was just saying that, I was like, we're way too close for you to be talking like this. <laughs> like, whoa. It's probably all the S sounds. Is uh, it? I think so. And the X's. Yes. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I don't, where is it's it's like, belly button? I swear it's up here because then there's orange because like your, like your root like chakra, chakra is red and then it's orange and then it's yellow. And I would assume the solar plexus is yellow because then up here and then this is like bluish and then this is green no i don't know i don't know this is yeah that's like good recall i don't remember all the yeah. colors i don't know but it's like it's the rainbow i feel mm-hmm. like you would also red have a chart to like purple or whatever what i feel like you would have a chart hanging up in your house i want to i don't want to go that far like i have it i have <laughs> screenshots in my phone as reference points it's not your but screen, I don't, screen I don't, saver it's not my screen saver there was a point <laughs> Or my screensaver was like, what are the things that like take away energy? And then the home screen world was like, what are things that generate energy? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Not really. It's just like, you know, what I thing? Mean, what, it's like, it's just you know, where, pre- where you're like in your, what is what you were saying was your ministry of like c- cooking food for mm-hmm. people or dancing or writing. And it's just like cleaning yeah. up your oh, space. Oh, you got a list of those actual it's things. Like I, the thought, actual... I thought it was like just a question. So whenever you look at your phone, you just ask yourself. No, that's that's too much. <laughs> you have a moment of ponderance <laughs> on your way to Instagram. <laughs> no, it's just like literal, like tangible things that we can be doing for ourselves. That's it's like smooth. close your phone. That's cool. That's mm-hmm. cool. That's cool. So I, I feel like you've achieved so much as we coming into, uh, I think the thing before we even got on mic was just the end of the summer coming down to the cooler parts of the year and and winding down to the end of the year Mm -hmm. and stuff. Are there still some like goals or some achievements that you out, even outside of running that you want to obtain before we have a holly jolly Christmas? You skip Thanksgiving, Halloween. Christmas is at the end of the year. I mean, New Year's, I guess it's the beginning, but New Year's Eve. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm running Chicago Marathon, and one of the things this is my second like actual marathon race. Interesting. Well, and a five k. And so, <laughs> uh, I learned quite a bit from the first time around. Um, and I'm really wanting to qualify for Boston, um, and then, uh, I guess, yeah, I think this whole season like feels good in the sense that like this first year I I just recently got back into running at the beginning of the year um, I took like a five or so year break to kind of just pursue dance and like pursue dance really hard and figure out what that, five years yeah five years and so that was the last time I did a marathon was in 2016 and that was when I was like all right like I feel fine with what this running thing is um just because like the running community looks really different in Portland. And so there were like really small um, like nuggets of spaces where I was able to feel supported. Um, but otherwise it felt like whatever I was doing is like what is, is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, where I think it's been really beautiful since I've been here. It's, it, I feel that community like support where it, this is something that we're doing together. So I'm, I'll, I'll be doing like the Chicago Marathon with any of the other folks here and um that's one of the things i'm reaching for is um yeah to qualify for boston but the this whole experience has been kind of an experiment because i have been running without a coach or like really guidance and it it was more so this thing of wanting to know that i had enough motivation to do this for myself 
um, before trying to bring other people on board to try to motivate me to do something that I wasn't convinced I could do for myself. And so I think that's been one thing that has been like worth celebrating. And I think what will feel like a celebration um, come Chicago is that there's been the dedication and just like motivation to continue pushing myself to get to this point. Um, and uh, like I, if you were to like really look through my Instagram, like one of the things that I declared for myself um, it, when I first came here was that I wanted to like really give myself a go at what it means to run at the in the Olympics. And so this oh, is, shit. yeah, you know, it is, that feels really out there. And so it's one of the yes. things where this first year felt really important for me of just like how much can I just be self-motivated before I start bringing people on board to help me reach this goal. Mm. And so that's one of the things where... So not just qualifying, actually doing it. Yep. Yeah. And so I, I don't know what that means yet. It's just like how I feel like that feels like the furthest or like pinnacle of like what where you could take running. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also very open with like exploring what that can mean. And so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Would it be would it be at, at marathon distance? I think so. It's either that or 10K is like the the interest. Yeah, because we got to replace Gabe and Rupp. Yeah. I mean, we. I don't know. We do. We do. With the way the way Kipchoge like sunned his ass, like I don't think you should. Yeah, he think really you should broke be allowed his spirit. to represent the flag. I, after like that. I know that you you you've already talked on this, but yeah, I was there with you when we saw yeah. that, and I was like, oh my gosh, Kipchoge just broke his spirit. His and entire then, spirit. Like his, his. What happened? He like my interpretation was he was like. You're not going to just run behind me. Oh, if yeah. you are going to run this race, I'm going to need you to run with me. And then he flew out way wide oh. to say, like, you're not going to draft on me anymore. I thought he did that to a Kenyan dude. No, he did that to Galen Ruck. Yeah. And I mean, like, he was he was out there like, come on, you want to run? Like, it, yeah. let's go. And Galen was just smiling. You know how niggas be smiling when... He, like, adjusted his nothing, hat. And he got nothing to say. And, and he, then he just faded. Instantly fell back to, like, and seventh place. Fuck. Yeah, and I was like, the spirit has been broken. Broke, broken, because he was right behind Kipchoge. Like, and, he, and he was smiling a lot, looking yeah. good. And it was one of those things where I think, you know. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you I know. just, no, I mean, go ahead, finish. No, there was just like these other small interactions where, you know, uh, Kipchoge like gave daps to the, uh, I think it was the homie fr uh, from Brazil. Oh, and it, it was when like, they passed up the Kenya mark. At the end? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So it was really early where uh, like Kipchoge like dapped the guy um, from Brazil. And this was, and then like literally uh, before they got halfway, this guy fell off and like he was oh, on the ground. Yeah. And remember we were like, oh, he's in fetal position. He's, yeah, he's, he's not done. coming back from this. Yeah, yeah. And then he like popped up and like started sprinting for like what looked like his life. And then he like really faded. And I was like, if I have a recollection of all the interactions that Elliot had, it was like this is I'm just out here on a like a really nice easy run. And, and everyone I'm, else and is everyone, racing. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. And the, these small gestures were really breaking people's spirits, I think. Yes. Because honestly, at Meanwhile, the, he and then he goes back to his tea farm. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Well, at the end when he when he when he picked it up. Yeah. And that was that huge gap because he, he, the difference was everybody was running as fast as they needed to. as, as They was running as fast as they could where Kipchoge was running as fast as he needed to. To win. That's it. Like he was just at the front of the pack and just coasting. And then when it was time for that last stretch, he, he beat them by like, I think the closest person to him might have been like 20 or 15 seconds behind him. But that's a, that's a lot. That's, That's a, lot a lot of, of time. Yeah. But I think there's been talk where he's like interested in going into ultra marathon distance. I mean, Do come something. on. Somebody, I mean, well, interesting that you bring this up because you ran a hundred mile race. Did you, so technically you ran an, you ran an ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. So is, are you interested in ultra marathons? I am interested uh, a little bit. Like that was something that someone had brought up to me where like, oh, is this the beginning of an ultra marathon career? And I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't like how this feels like being out here this long. Um, but it is interesting to me because uh, 
like at least one of the highlight points of that ex- of the speed project was there was a point where we left the 606 and went um like into the we were in wicker park we was in wicker park it was on milwaukee and they decided to run where the clubs was being let out yeah and so hilarious at, like at midnight where everyone was just out on the streets the cars were out like uh the freedom like i i really felt free in that moment running at that point kind of running through traffic um and i feel like that experience feels really similar to like when you run through trails and the experience you have running through trails and the freedom that you experience there and so that's one of the things where i could be tempted to uh do some ultra marathon trail stuff, running trail, trail running particularly specifically yeah um because of that feeling of freedom. But otherwise, I I don't like being out there. But I would say, like, I understand you don't like being out there. And I don't know. I mean, I've never ran 100 miles altogether. But, like, I am working my way up to a 100-mile r- race. And I, I'm doing a 50K in December. And so I'm like, it's the experience is going to be different because everything is facilitated for you. Your mm-hmm. food is probably, you know, like, people celebrating you and all that so it's like i encourage you to continue thinking about it because who knows <laughs> i appreciate it yeah I'll, I'll we'll see what happens we'll see. we'll see what what things kind of like present themselves um because yeah the thing is is that um i didn't really think too much about doing this speed project it was more of like a reaction because mm-hmm. the thing is is that uh i was part of a team that was supposed to run the LA to LV this year and then we dropped out just because of, like from like our our team was just not like fit and we didn't want to just put like folks who like were unprepared mm-hmm. um in the elements to mm-hmm. get injured mm-hmm. and I think that was like one of the things where we had it's to hot. Pull. yeah and no, it's, definitely. it's like it's all the things yeah there's a lot of different there's things there's all sorts of we, elements we want to do the OG route yeah who's we you I know I'm just, I making, love, I'm just making sure you talk about me <laughs> I would love to do it I would love to share that experience with y'all um going through the desert yeah and yeah uh yes. we get so, I so probably find like a Tesla RV or something that we yep we get ride. the <laughs> and and an RV so you know like that that's yeah. also one of the things that's like, really nice is like when you're not like running running you get like a little mini home let me plan this and put together a whole thing and try to get it, this shit sponsored. Yeah, because honestly, I love that. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. duh. Okay. But like, I, I, cause I didn't realize that, um, no, it's okay. I, I didn't realize that even though they've been doing the DIY, that if you still wanted to do the OG route, you could. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think the first, the first year we seriously thought about doing it, we decided not to because the way that it was framed mm-hmm. was you can only run where you were and stuff like that. We would have easily traveled and ran where. I think I think what's fun about it is like traveling. I want the traveling, seeing new places, going with people that you care about, representing your city and representing the, the connection you have amongst your group. I think mm-hmm. too, it's like that is really important. So yeah, I'm just like, it's not fun. For me, like the fact that you did it on the 606, three, three miles back and forth, like that to me is just like, I like, I, I don't know. Like that, that part, like I, it's not just the fact that you ran a hundred miles, but it's like just on a three mile stretch Yeah. in Chicago where it's flat as shit. Like it's not even, I mean, it's beautiful. Yes. But it's also like, wow. And honestly, at three, four o'clock in the morning, I'd have felt very uncomfortable running out there by myself. Like, by yeah, mm. but that was that was crazy. Was how long? What was the how? How much sleep did you actually get? I think actual sleep, uh, probably like an hour and a half. And it was I ended up napping from, uh, I think, three to four thirty at night. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna just try to walk until the sun comes up until i see someone else um but it is kind of interesting because let's see uh i'm trying to backtrack on on some other thoughts so yeah it started out as a reaction like that was why i i decided to um do a, a diy was because 
I wanted to still run, but then I think it was more so solo because um, I I got really inspired seeing some of the folks who ran from LA to LV. So I wanted to to see if what my body could handle. Um, but the reason why I chose 606 is what, that was one of the places that I felt like I could run uh, any like all hours of the day is particularly at nighttime. When I first came to the, the city because I was still doing work back in Oregon, I wouldn't like be available to run until like eight or nine, um, sometimes even 10 at night. And so that's one of the places where I, I personally felt like safe or just like not had to worry about cars. Like it was really int- like, mm-hmm. uh, like within the first hour of me running, um, actually underneath the bridge, there was like a car accident that happened. And I was like, well, this feels life affirming of like, of, of this decision not to try to run like on the streets. Um, just knowing that, yeah, you know, that, that could happen. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, that's it's, like one of it's completely, uh, it's, it's th- three it miles of uninterrupted mm-hmm. running. Yep. It makes sense. It makes sense. I just proved that. Like, I, I'm, the fact that you finished and did that many miles is, yeah. is the thing. I don't even think it can hear me. Nah, it's picking you up. Let's say, look, say something. Look. Yeah. Flat lines. No, it's right there. It's little <laughs> things right there. Yeah. Um, There's definitely like characters, like mm -hmm. folks on their bikes blasting like super hard techno. Um, But otherwise, there there wasn't a lot of, there's not a lot of people out there. Um, And I felt like pretty intimate with the 606 because I have spent so much time. But like, yeah, I met like one of the first friends I made was actually on the 606 running Mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. Um, And it was just like a young kid who was like trying to get back into shape. Um, and so that was like one of the things where I'm like, all right, if I just continue to be a welcoming and non like uh, threatening person, um, then I feel like I might be okay. Um, and if not, I feel like I am maybe a little bit fast enough to get myself out of strange situations. <laughs> they don't have to catch me. Yeah. So- uh, did you have something? Yep. But it's non-running related. Oh, that's what I was going to. Okay. That's what you're going to do, non-related? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> what inspired your hair? Oh, yeah. So Going blonde. Going blonde. Yeah. So, uh, fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, for folks who cannot see my hair, it's like very blonde. Uh, before, I had like these... Would you say it's golden, like highlights? Yeah, you had some highlights. In there. Some nice you also have a very, I mean, you know, Simeon has good head of hair. It's like yeah, it's like a big, you know, kind of fro. Yeah, right? curly. It's you know, there's a lot there. Yeah. So you see the hair. Is the point is you see the hair? Yeah, that was like one of the yeah. things when I when I made, came to my first seven on Sunday. Someone was like, "Oh, I saw you, the just yesterday on the lakefront. Wow. You're the the big he- head of hair." Just flying on the lakefront. Like, <laughs> that's me. That's that's my signature. No, but for the blonde, um, I I've always wanted to go platinum. Um, but the thing of where I'm like very okay with just this current phase is like as I continue learn learning about my own like lineage of just like where my family comes from, um, we've been able to trace that. Uh it, it's five generations back that my Great, 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 great grandfather is actually from Papua New Guinea, and so um, or Pap- Papua New Guinea, um, which is also in um, the northern Pacific. Uh, but they they do coral bleaching there, and so like you'll see, uh, like pa- Papua New Guinea is uh, part of like Melanesia, uh, where um, like Melanesia. Yep. So like. It's like, okay, Explain. more ge- uh, geography. So like um, like the Oceania or just like the Pacific Ocean is kind of uh, broken up into three parts where it's like Polynesia, where you'll have like Samoa and Tonga, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like Polynesia, Micronesia, which I had shared with you, I think is most uh, familiar with like Guam, Marshall Islands, Feder- Federated States of Micronesia, and then uh melanesia which is like fiji papua new guinea melanesia um, yep and then and like i i guess like these are 
uh, again, like colonizer terms. But the reason right. why is that uh, like Melanesia is like folks who they identified as very melanated. I was going to say, yeah, would it be black? Like yeah. what? Uh, yeah. That's, and so mm -hmm. it, it was like these like really dark skinned, like essentially black, like Islander people, but they had like these coral, like, like what my hair looks like now, mm -hmm. like bleached, um, bleached hair. And so, yeah, my, my, the, I think that's like one of the things where I was like, as an acknowledgement of like the roots that I come from, I also wanted to do something with my roots and hair and just uh, do, doing a, a You could write a book. That shit was laid. That first IG post you had, that joint was yeah. laid. It had a swoop in it. Yeah, we, we, uh, uh, we straightened my hair for that. Um, but that, that was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> but this is in a, it's nat more natural f form. True, true, is true. It with the curls. So, I mean, okay running aside like what else what else is Simeon into like what else do you do for enjoyment yeah um so I think that's what also informs like why it made sense for me or I was like oh this aligns um coming to Chicago is that I like really enjoy house music and uh for some time uh was like learning like about house dance and mm -hmm wanted to really just come to the go to the source of where house music came from and so okay. that was like one of the things where so you just uh, came here out of the blue kind of it was more so like there wasn't anything that was like i need to go to chicago it was more so like uh some of those pandemic reflections where i'm like i think it's time for me to be in a new place and environment um and you picked chicago yeah um Did you, it, know, you didn't know anyone i knew like I had a friend from middle school who, who was here and then a friend that I used to dance with who was here. But um, yeah, I didn't and really so, know you. So, and so dance music. Yeah, dance music was like one of the things where I'm like, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I, I guess of how I ended up here in Chicago was actually like, excuse me, in this time of like reflecting at the beginning of the year. Um, one of my good friends uh, had let me know that she was coming here to move here um because she used to live here and but the thing that like hooked me was that she was like but how i'm going to do it is that i want to do a road trip and get to experience all these different places before coming here and i was like that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> i love road trips i, I want to do that and if if you don't mind i love to take my little car i like really enjoy like taking my car like on these long adventures and so that's how it started was just me doing a road trip to Chicago. And then um, after some time, I was like, actually, there's not anything that uh, feels like I'm being anchored in Portland where I need to return right away. Um, and so that's when I started actually entertaining the idea of coming to Chicago. And so like, I'm, and might, I was just, like, might as well just stay. Yeah, I might as well stay. You know, what's, what's the <laughs> rush? And that was like one of the things where I was like, oh, this is where house music is this is where i would love to like go and experience the club experience i used to like dj quite a bit um in portland i was like the um dj for a lot of our dance community and so like whenever there would be dance battles i would be the dj for that right the most interesting motherfucking man like, what <laughs> yeah it was dope yeah and so that was like one of the things where i it felt important for me of like all right if i'm gonna like spin like these for these certain styles i have to like understand the roots and so like i guess that's like uh one of the things i just like really jumped into was like uh last i think it was last month i went to um a footwork picnic and oh, i was yeah. like that was really dope random too. no like in uh, the south suburbs what like what was it I think it was in Harvey. Yeah. I, I went down to Harvey to go to a... Um, Within four months, he goes from Portland to Harvey. Where's Harvey? Like, south. Like south, Harvey, south. what? Illinois. Illinois. Oh, it's Harvey, south. Illinois? Yeah. Oh, that's basically the south. That's the south suburb. No, oh, like, but is it south tip of the state? No. No. Okay, south suburbs. Yeah, okay, south the suburbs. way you exaggerated south, I was yeah, like, but okay. No, like, for, as far as Chicago goes, that's like, south like i'm not going to fucking harvey for anything <laughs> like no yeah but last month uh august was like 
Footwork Appreciation Month. And so they're doing events all throughout the month. And so it was dope to like really like be in the presence of like the folks who originated it and like have multiple generations of footwork. That was um, dope, man. That was some Chicago shit. Yeah. And That's so lit. I was like one of the things where I was like, all right, if I want to I think I saw music, that on your Instagram. Yeah. That was in Harvey? Yeah. Okay. Lit. How, 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 how solid is your footwork after being there? Oh, it's, I showed up in slides. I was not trying to do, I don't learn anything. I forgot. <laughs> he did. He left. Uh, you you showed up. You us. showed up trying not to make sure people would not try yeah, to get was, you in the circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was like one of the things where I felt it was important, like to honor and not feel like, uh, uh, yeah, to get the context, understand like where the music comes from. Like mm. I, I got to go to the source. Um, but I don't even really know what, what it means to DJ at this point. Like, uh, I, I was really in practice at the beginning of pa- pandemic. And like, I think with a lot of us where we're like, we're going to pick a craft and become really great at it. And like, this was a moment where I was like, this is where I'm going to get really good at DJing. <laughs> and then I think it was like one of those things where it became hard to do if it wasn't for an audience. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I really feed off that energy, but um yeah that's like one of those things where i still was curious and wanting to learn about where where these things and music came from and so it's been really cool to learn the history of music here in this in this state and city wow wow i just have one other one other question you have a a whoop and a garmin (laughs) yeah tell us about your technology okay so uh, the Garmin is to track all the activities and have. Like, Do you wear a, it all day? No, I don't wear. I don't wear the Garmin. You're wearing it right now. I am wearing it right now because originally I was planning on biking here. Okay. Um, but then because we bumped up the time, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have to drive. Yeah. Uh, and then I forgot to take it off. The Whoop band does stay on. Um, for everything, uh, everything. everything. It Do you shower on. with it? Because I know Ian's got one too. Do you guys shower with I it? Shower. Uh, sometimes I take it off uh, for. Is for the showering. band waterproof? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, do you have an extra three point charger? I do. Can I fucking buy it from you or something? Like the cord? No, like the the thing that goes sides on the block. The top. Yeah. This is whoop talk. I have no idea. Maybe I have only have one. Oh okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah. Okay. He's like, you can charge your shit, but I need to charge mine too. Yeah. No, I, I accidentally watched mine and the 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 little clip on because the the charger is uh, you don't plug in the actual watch. It's like a little clip on that goes onto your watch that charges it up, and then that part needs to be charged, right? It's not waterproof, unfortunately. And I had it in some running shorts because I actually left the house with it to go on a run and just put it in. And of course, I don't check my pockets when I'm washing clothes, so. I watched it and now it doesn't work. And they just released like an upgraded version of the Whoop. And now they're no longer selling the older charging set sets. Damn. So you're like, if it went. My shit has not worked for two weeks and it stresses me out. So you're just wearing it now? Yeah, because like I need balance. I need something on my, I have something on my right wrist, (laughs) wrist, so I need something on my left wrist. So it's just for looks? No. It's for look. It I'll, I'll bring work. a charge. Since you said that, I feel stupid. <laughs> I'll bring a. I'll bring a charge. It's just a look, you guys. I'll bring a charge block for you uh, tomorrow, so then you can at least get to use it. Right. But uh, the reason why I use the Whoop is, uh, yeah, I needed like a habit tracker um, and something to help, um, like track my recovery, mm-hmm. because I think that's one of the things where I I still feel skewed of just like how good I'm feeling and whether I do need to back off. Like, you know, I think that like with me running three races in a week, it was like one of those things where it's like, okay, how much do I really need to like recover? Um, or like, what are these things that, uh, where it's like, all right, uh, even within race, have a level setting moment of like, all right, I'm not in the green or I'm going to be feeling my best. What are some things that I can do to still feel strong throughout? And I think the same thing with workouts. Um, but also I'm really terrible at sleep. Like that was one of the things for my first ever seven on Sunday is that I actually didn't sleep all night because I was like, man, I'm really struggling to wake up in the morning. So if if I don't go to sleep, 
then I can't wake up late. And so that was uh, like one of those things. That. You wake uh, up like every hour. <laughs> yeah. And so that was like one of the things where like uh, the Whoop Band is super helpful in tracking recovery and just also like doing some like level setting of like how you're doing with rest because like heart rate doesn't really lie of just like okay your heart's really working like just to get through this day like you really need to scale it back um just because mm -hmm. i think yeah with and i don't know if it's like with other runners but i think the threshold of like what you can handle and just like the amount of stress you go through yeah um i i think that's like one of those things that i'm not super great at knowing when to scale it back but i as of recently i feel like i've been really great at knowing when to be still chill out um and i feel like uh other behaviors where it's become very clear like it's interesting like to like a finding that i've been able to see with whoop is that like anytime i drink alcohol I, it takes me longer to recover than it, it does from any kind of intense run yeah like and you and like not like a run and alcohol, but like just a night of, of drinking, yep. and it's like the next day you will it's like bruh. How does it know you drink? Well, it, it's like it's really interesting, but the how they correlate is like it's self recorded data of like I drank, but then it also uh, tracks like when you uh, take the drink and. Uh, the heart rate when you rest like the thing is your heart is working a lot harder and to the nighttime um, after a night of drinking compared to not yeah yeah so it's like a die every 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 day when you wake up when it's processing your recovery it's like a diary entry and you can like also like kind of suggest what questions to ask you because it asks you have you drank did you have sex did you yeah. sleep alone did you uh, have sweets like it, it'll ask you like just a list of questions you say yes or no to mm -hmm. and it's like if you had sex at what time you know what I'm saying or how many joints of water and it takes that stuff and it's counting it at the end of the week and then at the end of the month it spits back out an assessment mm -hmm. of all of these things that you went through for me I didn't get it for recovery I really got it to push myself harder because what I was what I was feeling like was like I'm not working hard enough. I have more. I just don't know. I don't know where the bottom of my tank is. Mm. And I need to work hard. And that's what I got it for. Because for as long as I've had it, it's constantly saying you're doing enough to maintain fitness. And my goal is to push my fitness, I guess, yeah. for lack of a better term. So that's that's pretty interesting. I love it. It stresses me out that it's not working right now. And they might get $150 for this fucking 4.0 that I don't Are you going to get the 4.0? I, I might have to because yeah. I can't charge my up no more. I think I'm going to buy a Matthew one. He's not going to listen to this, so he won't know. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> 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 so, uh, it's going to be every, I feel like every week it's going to be like, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, no, it's cool because I feel like it also, sorry, but it also like, it's not just about, um, the workout that you're doing it tracks every form of stress that your body goes through because like weather, allergies that right. was one that is always that shit will fuck you up it's fucking me up right weather. now allergies yeah yeah all of that stuff like stress our the stress on our body is i don't know what i'm trying to say but it, it comes from different places whether it's physical emotional mental and it affects our recovery. My friend Adrian said that he ha he got one and he was like, when he first got it, he was like getting his daughter ready to go to school. And then the whoop was like physical labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Because he was like lifting her up and doing all these things. And she's like, she's young. So she's like running all over the house. So I was like, that's funny. Um, yeah. I had something. I feel like y'all can track how this new puppy is affecting y'all, y'all new life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking about the fact that like, that's some in intense data that they have mm -hmm. yeah. on so many individuals. And I'm not, and I'm not like, I'm going to get one. I'm just saying like, did having that much data on people is, it's like, you can tell a lot about human beings on the back end. If you work for a whoop and you know, like, 
when people had sex, when they drank, when they did this, when they have allergies, when they are like running, if they're running the activities of like human beings on a daily basis that they willingly put in to this status system. Like it's wild. Yeah. I hope they don't sell it to, I mean, they're going to sell it. They're probably already <laughs> sold it low key, but like that's, I don't think I, you I, think I, that they can keep it for I, I themselves. I think they have a podcast. Yeah, they have a podcast. I've listened to a couple episodes. I I, I feel mm. like they keep that stuff for research. I mean, for themselves. It. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't think they for science. I should say not necessarily. But that's what the, that's what it all marketing. is for. But I don't think they're selling it for like marketing dollars and you know like what's the Cambridge Analytica did and shit like that. I don't think that's what they're doing with information. But I I I, I like I. Whenever they have some kind of study or something, I join it. I did it for the COVID stuff mm-hmm. and everything, and let them know when I had my shot and everything, which was interesting because that shit, like my next day, my recovery like sucked and mm-hmm. stuff. Like they really took a really heavy toll on my body when I got the shots, and I could see it in real time versus just most people who were just having a conversation about it. Facts. I'm gonna get one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the body handles it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, like, like the new ones is like black, and they like got this gold finish on top. That's just so fucking big. <laughs> okay. If you get it, we'll be twenties. Okay. You know, because if I'm buying one, because you're gonna, gonna get a new one. one. Okay. Gonna one. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get Matthew one first. Um, what do you have any other thing? I don't. I don't. I mean, I've, 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 I. I don't even know what the fuck it say. Like, honestly, like, sometimes, like, he'll get into his stories when we're at the promontory. Like, somebody asks him a question. Oh, yeah. And has a story to tell us and stuff like that. And it's one of the few moments where I'm at a loss of words. I'm just thoroughly interested in thinking about what he's talking about. I don't have those moments often. So, (laughs) I feel like I'm so far outside of my podcasting bag right now just sitting here listening to you. But I enjoy it. Is there anything that like you want to share about yourself personally or like as a runner or just anything as a new Chicagoan ish? Yeah, I guess it's like one of the things I've been really curious about um, of just like how welcoming and kind of how much access I've had to certain spaces or what feels like a lot of access um, of just been more curiosity uh, around what the protocols are. I was just like, what does it mean for a new person to come into community? And like, what do you all trust them with? And just because I think that's one of the things where like, I've recognized that I've gotten a lot of opportunity to influence. Like, I, I feel like I'm like always on the seven on Sunday, something being highlighted for something. And I'm like, what is this? Uh, which I really appreciate. Um, I'm just like um, having that platform, like to just you know, be celebrated. Um, and I guess that's like, maybe just for me to like work through of like what it means to be seen. Um, Cause I think that was one, something that I really resonated quite a bit um, in, in some other conversations about how a lot of us in our community uh, have a tendency to not tell anyone when we have a race that's coming up. Mm. Um, this new fad of, of like, Post race posting, yeah, not and telling I, us because you don't want us to show up. I, I hate it. Yeah, and I don't know if it's like, like part of like the like low key or just like low, uh, like oh yeah, I did or this being thing. Self-conscious. Uh, yeah, or if it is a thing where it's like being self conscious. Um, but I think that's like one of the things I'm curious about. If y'all have like a a thought on that, of just like you know when someone comes into community, what is there like? You know, actually, I got in trouble earlier this week about this because, um, oh shit, as I'm talking, I probably shouldn't be talking about it, but how can I speak about it in a respectful way? You do yeah. it every week. I do. I do because I'm, I, I really don't, I really, I really don't monitor what I say and I just say things mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, I don't divulge people's secrets and businesses and stuff, but this this is an intimate setting, but it's also public. And I have to remind myself as I'm talking that this is still kind of public. But what I will say is uh, there was something that was done within the community that I did not 
that I did not like. It wasn't done to me. Mm-hmm. It was just done in the in the space and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, um, yeah, no, I didn't like it. Um, I, I still don't like it at, in this moment. But it, it comes down to to the trust in the community and being able to trust because that's how we're able to be as open and as welcoming and as supportive is when there's this this mutual level of responsibility and trust and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And um, as as we were growing in that with you, you know, there were some other people in the community who, for me, were tearing that foundation down for sure you know so it's it's an interesting thing it's an interesting thing especially as our as this because i mean the running community in chicago has been around well before us mm-hmm. but as our little pocket of community grows especially um from the backgrounds that our families come from being black and brown what is it bipoc or whatever the fucking political term is you know it's it's interesting to see us grow from the infant stage where it was like three, four of us running at seven on Sundays, seven of us running at, at gumbo to now it's like, it's, it, it's, it, at, at some weekend I'm seeing like a hundred different runners yeah, between the two crews, you know? And that means there, there's all types of different dynamics that are happening, different beliefs, different concepts, different ideas, different temperaments and stuff like that. So it's been, pretty interesting watching it even as from my perspective as a like not i still don't feel comfortable saying leader but like as somebody you know watching every spectating yes Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's interesting interesting. do you have a thought on that (laughs) your look at me right now you're just like and you (laughs) yeah we might be shifting the gears where i'm not interviewing you but i think Uh, it's this thing of just like you know i i have thought about of like who who am i to be coming up in all these spaces like uh like i i didn't sign an nd uh is it nda yeah like i i uh will be like modeling for like the Chicago Nike wear where I'm like, I have the Chicago on my chest. I'm like, who am I? This guy who just came here four months ago, really like repping Chicago like that. Mm. And so I guess that's like one of the things where I'm like, I feel like there should be something uh, like who, if I am to like be repping Chicago in such a way, like earning my stripes in some sense of like being able to do such a thing. And so I guess that's where I'm curious, like what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, I'm not from Chicago. I grew up in Minneapolis. I moved here six years ago. So I definitely, and I, when I first moved here, I, I, I mean, he knows the story. I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. I had no community. I knew Matthew. um, And I was doing something completely different. I was, didn't even consider myself a runner. And I was definitely in search of community. I definitely found some community and that, that was great, but that wasn't like the community I felt most at home with. And the way I found running was just from like my own interests of like wanting to find a sport that I could do into my older age, which mm-hmm. how, whatever that sounds like, but that's the point of like, I, f- I want to be running marathons when I'm 80, you know? And I felt like why don't I try running a marathon? So then I did and I met Ian. And so then, but yeah, I never at any point, like I try my best to make sure people know that I'm not from Chicago. I think that that's like where I feel my, where my responsibility lies personally, where I'm like, I know I'm not a Chicago native. I don't try to claim to be a Chicago, Chicago native. I love Minnesota. I love my people in Minneapolis. Like that's my home. And but at the same time, I found my own home here in Chicago because the Chicago community has accepted me. Mm -hmm. And yes, it wasn't overnight. For me, it took years. For you, it took months. And that just depends on like where you're at and where your efforts lie. Like you were already into running. I didn't run in high school, college, whatever. So like that wasn't something that would just came naturally to me. Um, And I also quite literally had to create my own community Mm -hmm. too. So like, I was just, I talked, yeah, I mentioned this, like I I was literally talking to my therapist about this this morning where I'm just like, it speaks to who I am as a person where it's like, sometimes I literally have to create the community 
that I want to be a part of. And like, I'm the type of person to just do that. Mm-hmm. Whereas other people, they don't want to do that. So then they are in search to find the community. And it's just like, and it's just a different mindset, different personalities. And so, yeah. So like, and I would say too, it's like, I didn't never intended on, I never had any foresight of like, oh, I want to, I, yes, I, I would say like I've seen other run clubs on Instagram and I was like, yeah, I would love for us to have like a, a big group photo and have fun. But I didn't know what it would take to get there really other than like consistency. So mm-hmm. I just showed up every week. Um, and I think that that's the stripes that you end up earning for yourself is like showing up for yourself, showing up for your community and then declaring what you want and, and like sharing your goals and being vulnerable with the people around you. I will. I will say even speaking to you directly, Simeon, it's like it it took us, it took me, Aaron, and Craig a, a while to get where we are um, and to have like the group chat the way it is, which is crazy mm-hmm. for it to be like, I don't even know, it has to be over 50 people in this group chat, but like you you would think it was like four best friends talking in this group chat, right? Um, but it, it was so, it was just so many Sundays where it was just the three of us, then Mark came in and stuff like that, or the four of us, I forget, Nahaj and stuff like that. But so many people say, like, oh yeah, we, I love what you're doing, but like seven in the morning on a Sunday, you know, like I, I can't really do that and things like that. Even some of our close friends who we around, yeah, did you know, yeah. But so when you when our seven on Sundays regulars, when it's like you, uh 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 damn, I feel like I said Karen name like too many times. But like uh yeah, Key, Rosalie, um, Heather, uh uh Jeremy and stuff like that, like Austin, like when y'all continuously, like, if I see y'all more than, like, if I see y'all four four times back to back, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I think we have a new runner. Like, me and Aaron are texting each other, like, gee, I think we got a new runner because it means so much because we've heard it so many times. It's just, like, people have treated it like it's a really big ask for people to come mm-hmm. out on, on Sunday mornings. Well, the, even when we started off in the three mile routes, like, yeah, nah, we got a shorter route for you. It's still like a really big ass. So it means a lot to us. And that's why we like just embrace y'all as much as possible. Like, please don't leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think um, I raised my hand because I was one of those people, but it's also because I was facilitating my own run club on the Saturday. So it's like, I, but you would also come out on Saturday. So I can't even use yeah, it. No, I, I come to everything. Ah, uh, yeah. Everything. I'm amazing. Like yeah. That. I try to do that, but also I just got to chill a little bit. But that was one of the things too, was that I literally, like, my recollection is I, I was at seven on Sunday. I was at Take the Bridge with y'all. And like a very pivotal moment was when the group picture happened and you're like, yeah, come in. Come <laughs> join in the group picture. Everyone like, wants to be invited of, in. I'm part of the South Side running community. I don't even <laughs> Um, but I think that was like one of the things where I I think made, in that first week felt like very welcome and I'm just happy to continue to be in community with you all. I love it. We was like, we was deep too in heartbreak. Because when I look at the pitch and realize like how many people was who was still there who was not in the pitch, it was like, damn, like we basically like had heartbreak to ourselves. <laughs> wait, no, but so wait, the picture that we were all in, mm-hmm. where it was like all the South Side and we like, that was the first picture that you were a yeah. part of? And I was only there for a week. Like literally I came to so, seven on Sunday, that Sunday. That's hilarious. And then was there that Friday. And it was so true too. Cause like once we all came together, it was like all the black folks, all the people of color <laughs> were like on the one side of the, of the, of the shop. And it was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. It was love. It was love. But I mean, that's, I know as far as me and Courtney goes, like that's what, that's the environment that we want to foster. Um, just that level of comfort. And, and yeah, we want that. We want everybody to feel like, yeah, this is home. Oh. Let's do that. I mean, last, even last lap corner store, like the minute I get out of, the minute I can grow into a facility, 
that can support the full vision of what I want it to be. Like, especially if this whole, like, a lot of these companies continue to work from home where when they got to go into the office, you know, a couple of days a week, like I want a section within my store where it's like, I have a table, like, come in, bring your computer. Like I'm, the lights are on all day. The AC is on, the heat is on. Come hang out, talk shop, talk run, talk whatever, get you a smoothie and, and just enjoy it. Like it's, it's going to grow into a hub and it's another place where you can go. I have another beautiful idea for like runners that I'm not going to say like on here, but I'll tell you off mic that I want to do in the next five years if Last Lab continues to grow at the rate that it's growing. But it's, it's it's all about community and having space for us to like just be happy together and enjoy ourselves. Is there anything else that we could do to make our community better? I don't know. Like I, I feel like what I've experienced here is like significantly more than uh, I've experienced in Portland. And so the, if anything, I've just my eyes have been a bit more open to like white community can look like because uh like i know that we've or the, the conversation about portland being like a really major like running hub it's like more so for elite runners and it doesn't feel as accessible for like anyone who is just getting started to really come out to um besides like when like the nike run clubs were happening and mm-hmm. being hosted back like in the yeah, like 2015 to 2018. Um, but outside of that, yeah, there wasn't any clubs that really stuck around um, that felt welcoming for like black and brown folks. And so that was like one of the like last things I was like sh- scheming to try to start, which uh, <laughs> myself, just because it wasn't happening. But thankfully, like this past summer, there's uh, a really cool club called dead stock run club that just popped up um that Dope is, in portland right yeah in portland uh which they they've had a, like huge turnout for folks coming and so i i'm really happy to see that that's that's happening and so yeah i i wouldn't have i don't have anything no i'm just yeah i think i feel complete i don't know about y'all but we've been talking for a, a good hot yeah. long minute yeah, no, it's 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 been a real one. We could we could stop and I'll be happy. I could also keep talking and be happy, but it's it's smooth. I really appreciate you coming through and especially at the last minute. I think what I I literally just asked you on Sunday. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, so I'm I'm super happy that you was able to come through and share. Wanna have you on again because I know you're gonna continue to do some amazing dope stuff. Please don't get into the habit of letting us know after you do it. Because okay. everybody else who's doing that sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for crossing town for another day, another time. Man, to... I was going to ride his bike from... I know. I was going to say that means you would have rode back too. No, for sure. Which is fine because like I'm in this little uh, competition of just like how many, how active you can be every day. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to log like this, this... Uh, 20 or so are you in mile. this competition with yourself? No, it's like with all other right. people and there's like money on the line. So I'm oh. just like, all right, I want to, I'm trying to get this. <laughs> oh, so it, okay. it's, it's fun. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you all like thinking of me and having the space to like, for like us to get to know each other, but also like for folks who have like seen me like on IG and want to get to know me a little bit more, I guess if that that's what I wanted go. to put out, you know? People been sliding in your DMs. Tell us about it. We got 10 more minutes. <laughs> no, no. You even get you in my DMs, I don't think. I don't think so. Anyways. He turned it red, like... John. He turned it red. Who been sliding? No one's sliding. It's... I don't think Can so. Can anybody no. slide? Are you single, Anyone sir? <sighs> Are you single? I, I am single. It, it's like one of those things where there is this. Are you ready to mingle? Wait, I am finished. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. To, like there's, you know, there is a, I'm doing that. Sh- I'm in the season of doing shadow work and like really addressing the traumas that, you know, of how I've shown up in past oh, relationships. And so like, that's like one of the things where I feel that's important for me to like really come, come with it. Cause I like, I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. I like also 
feel like I am very generous with my time, but I'm like one of those, I'm also recognizing like a boundary for myself is that I can't just be giving my time and energy to things mm, speak and that um, don't serve me. And like, I think I've become a really like a little bit better about saying yes and no to things. And like, I feel that I want to be able to orgasmically say yes to things and be like, yeah, this feels great instead of like uh, what I typically do is this negotiation of like, yeah, this makes sense for me. And I think that's one of the things that this year has been, I've been a lot better about is like, if it's not like a, oh my God, yeah, it, it's probably a no. Um, and I should <laughs> cut it off. And so that, that's like one of the things where um, when it comes to dating and doing that whole thing, like uh, I feel a lot better about just like getting to know people as friends um and then we'll kind of see how Let's it goes from it there goes. yeah i just want to let you know that you would be considered a fuck boy by half of this yeah i heard right? yeah no, that's what I, not at all that's <laughs> not what i'm saying no i i think it's I say, like you say you actually have friends or you have friends with benefits no i just friends okay and i think that's one of the things is like currently is that because distinctions okay. Yeah, like the thing is, is that <laughs> like, especially in Chicago, like a lot of my community are like people who I see on the regular running with. And I feel like that like fucks up the dynamic. If I'm like, all right, we're doing this other thing, but we're also trying to be in this other space. And I am uncertain of how like, well, we can keep these boundaries of like the difference between us motivating each other to do this thing, but then this whole other side thing that may not be in alignment with our values. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to like, I'm trying to live like in that's integrity the over here. Of many runners in these communities <laughs> because when I say like, it's also it's just like because also you want to allow you both to find motivation in the community and like because if something goes wrong, then it's like, well, can I show up? Yeah, Are right. Going to be there you know, too. That's, yeah, I'm, and I'm. And that's you don't want to mess that I up. Wanna navigate. What What do you care about more? You got to find somebody that you can like, like have really, really good open communication with, and stuff like that. And I think that's like, that's 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 a gem. That's rare. Mm -hmm. And if you find it, like, it's pretty dope. But like, I you use words like shadow work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I know. I know. If I know, you don't know, just know look it up. Yeah, I know. It's. I know. It's some people who was just listening to that. Yeah. Who might be recharging their crystals right now? Who got hella moist? <laughs> yeah, hella I don't moist. got crystals. It's not like that. It's more of like you know what are the. But nah, that's like, that's some top tier shit. Shadow work is important. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm I am. I am in a place where I'm trying to find my boundaries, and things like that. Um, it honestly, especially with women, so. Um, and saying yes to things and not, like you said, mm -hmm. you said it so beautifully, actually, like uh, things that don't, don't, don't serve. serve me yeah. and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. I'm, I'm also really happy where I am right now. There's some interesting, beautiful things happening. So Do you want to elaborate? No, I can't. All right. <laughs> All right, Simi, and thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Like Ian said, we would love to have you back when yeah, it definitely. feels right. Um, so keep achieving amazing things. Like you're inspiring us all after coming here for just what half a year, less than half a year. Yeah, it's it was my five month on uh, September sixth. So it was like the that Sunday, I think it was, and so it felt really good wow. to be able to celebrate in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you all for, again for bringing me on. To the listeners, uh, if if you're running, and I, I hope you're done running and you're taking the time to cool down and stretch, you know, money in the bank. Uh, I don't know, Shardy, what do you drink? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. I think we no. need to start doing this more, just speaking to our runners. as Yeah, it feels important, you know, break that fourth wall and let them know that we, we're thinking about you mm. and that, you know, uh, another day and toward getting closer to our goals.